Hello, welcome back to witch videos. Uh, it's been a minute since I've done some like strictly witchy videos, but I'm feeling like I'm finally, it's been happening slowly for a few months now, but I'm feeling like I'm finally back into the craft vibes. For a lot of 2021, but just like really like winter and stuff, I was just out of it, uh, not really engaging with witchcraft a ton, um, had not been reading a ton of witchy just resources and things. It just, just felt very distant and that happens sometimes, it ebbs and flows. But the last few months I've been getting very into it. Uh, I've bought a number of things, um, a number of just uh, things I want to show you. So uh, let's, let's get back into it, shall we? How have you guys been with your craft? Let me know. I will say almost all of these things with a few exceptions um, were purchased from the same store in Chicago that I have recently discovered. So I will tell you all about that. So go with decks and stuff first. This is some of the stuff that I didn't get from that store. So everything else will be after that. So first was a tarot deck that was a gift. It's the White Newman Sacred Animal Tarot. This comes in a wonderful little box that's like all magnetic. Here's the cards, here's the little guidebook. Um, this has a very interesting art style. This was gifted to me by a friend and follower. Uh, so like this is sort of the vibe. I do have a walkthrough that I filmed before I moved into this place, so like literally two months ago, um, but I still have not um, edited and uploaded it. So hopefully sometime this month, maybe, mayhaps. Um, I will do that so that we can actually see this deck in its entirety, but it is very pretty. I've used it a handful of times. Um, I enjoy having it as an alternative to my other sort of like nature decks. I'm a nature deck person, you guys know this. My other deck is an Oracle deck that I uh, backed on Kickstarter. This is the Embroidered Graveyard Oracle, and this is about just like, the dark side of things, communing with spirits, behind the veil, that kind of vibe. I follow this artist on Instagram and I didn't love the tarot deck. They have a embroidered forest tarot deck and I didn't like love the tarot, but what's cool, so first off again, we have this beautiful box. It is just, oh, stunning. And then here's what the cards look like. Now, this is also one I wanna do a walkthrough on, so I haven't used this deck since I've gotten it because I wanna do a walkthrough of it and I haven't filmed it yet. Um, but this is what the backs look like. Then it has foiled edges, and then it's this kind of embroidered artwork. So like, for example, we have this they them card. We have like innocence. Um, Oracle decks are all different as many of you probably know. We have like release. Um, let's see another one. Oh, here's like a cool like weaver. So this is all embroidery style art. And again, it's this like very death. Ooh, this one's, this one's good, this one's good. Crow's eye view. Yeah, I really need to start using this because I'm feeling very in this energy. Um, but again, I'm like, I wanna make a lock there. So I haven't done it yet. Again, here's the box with like moths and stuff, which you guys know I'm a moth bitch. You can probably see my art in the background. What's really nice about this too is this came with a beautiful, huge guidebook. So it's hardcover, it has the foiled edges, it has the pictures of the art on the page and like full descriptions and stuff to go with it. So I love an Oracle deck that has a big guidebook like this because the flimsy little guidebooks, like I just can't with those. There's just not enough information. So I'm excited to use both of those decks more, particularly the Oracle deck because I've been waiting for that one for a while. The next thing I got was this cute little incense holder. So the incense stick goes right here. I was at a shop, not this witchy shop, but another one uh, with a friend. It's a motorcycle shop that also has witchy stuff in it. Very random. Cause I also, just to show you, I got some of these pins there as well. So I got this pin, which is not something I was even planning on showing, but it's like a cat, like a constellation cat with books. Um, this cool like motorcycle gang, like thing going on. Um, it's not like a gang, but you know, like it has like that vibe. So yeah, I got a bunch of cool shit there too. But they had this incense holder and I was like, this is beautiful because I don't like the little like boat looking incense holders. Like I have a really hard time finding ones that I like. And this sort of like palmistry looking, I mean, it's not even, it's just witchy palm stuff um, is totally my vibe. So I ended up picking that up. The rest of the stuff is all from Malloway Brothers in Chicago. So this uh, store is up in the Rogers Park neighborhood, which is like North Chicago. Uh, and it's my favorite. It's about half an hour away from me, so I have to drive. But the vibes there are immaculate. This store and then Sideshow Gallery, which is not exclusively a witchy shop. It has like witchy stuff and 
art and oddities and stuff. That's Sideshow Gallery. Mallory Brothers is owned by two witch brothers um, who are delightful. They have a ton of workshops. They have a ton of events. I went to their Beltane event. Uh, they, the shop is like so cute. I sh I'm tempted to do like a, I don't know if, if some of the stores would let me do this, but like almost like a witchy store vlog or whatever. Um, the vibes in Mallory Brothers are so good. I've been to other shops in Chicago that I don't like. Um, but that and Sideshow, my favorites. Uh, Mallory Brothers has like, they make their, they make stuff for you if you want them to, or they have like all the ingredients, very knowledgeable, shit ton of books, everything you could want. I'm so sad that they're far away from me, but I usually go there like at least once a week or every other week. So this is all stuff from there. Uh, so let's go with crystals first. So I picked up, I was going through some shit and so I wanted some like dark feminine energy crystals to like vibe with. I ended up doing a thing where I had three crystals um, and then three tarot cards that I pulled out that I wanted to sort of like embody. Those were the Empress, um, the High Priestess, and the Queen of Swords. If you know anything about tarot, that's what I was vibing with at the time. So, and then I had these crystals to kind of go with them and I was just like, I had those on my altar. I still do, um, just kind of like vibing with the energy. So I picked up some obsidian to be like, get the fuck away from me and boundaries. And then picked up, I think this is Rhodonite, I wanna say. I kind of forget because I wasn't using this one like quite as much. This is one, I also was using Carnelian, which I already had, uh, but this is one for like, sort of like intuition side of things, like intuition confidence, where Carnelian is more like straight up confidence, passion. This is more of like the intuitive side of things is what I was getting from that. So these were the crystals that I used. Um, Malloy Brothers isn't my favorite for crystals. They have a number of them, um, but I prefer Geology Rocks in Chicago. Um, and it, they're all in different neighborhoods uh, for my crystals because that's just a crystal store. So, um, but they happen to have these things and I wanted them at the time that I went. Then I have this that I've already used. It's a road opener bath salt. I don't know what's all in it. Um, they don't put their ingredients and stuff on things because again, they pre-mix it themselves. But I was feeling, I love the way this smells. I was feeling very stagnant like about a month ago um, and went and got this road opener uh, baths or oils are pretty common, um, salts and stuff like that, that, just for basically like clearing out some blockages. Like you wanna get shit done, road opener. So, and that can be for any kind of thing. It can be for like finding new connections. It can be for finding a new job. It can be for getting the motivation to clean, like whatever but I wanted that energy and I've used, yeah, about half of it so far. Loved that. I got that before my last tattoo, which means it's time for about another ritual bath before I get another one this week. Then I finally did a thing that I should have done a while ago and I actually bought a fucking cauldron. Um, I just could not find one that I liked. Uh, I kept seeing ones that were slightly smaller than this and this is like the perfect size. Um, I don't really have any need for anything bigger than this. Uh, I love that it has a handle. They have a lot of magical supplies. They have a bunch of cauldrons that are all like different sizes, incense burners, um, boxes and stuff to hold either like tarot cards or other shit. Uh, so yeah, I love that they had this because I also didn't want one with a um, pentacle on it. Um, I can smell the stuff that I was burning in the last night. It smells so good. Uh, I didn't want one with a pentacle, not because pentacles are bad. I just like, I wanted a plain one. So I finally found one that I liked yay, this makes my burning so much safer because I was for a while using like an oven safe bowl, but I felt that that got like really hot, even though it was oven safe. This is much better. I um, cleansed my house last night and I can smell the cedar because I use cedar um, cleansing wands for cleansing. And then the rest of this stuff I bought today. So first I got an assortment of natural incense. Um, this stuff, this brand, they really recommend it. I was looking at a bunch of different brands there. This is like, again, natural incense. So it's all like hand dipped and I actually got a sampler. So it's of all of the scents that they had because I wasn't really sure what I wanted. So it's frankincense, gum damar. Again, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Myrrh, frankincense, sandalwood, gum bazoin. That's not right, ben benzoin. Maybe that is right, I don't know. Siam benzoin and gum copal. Um, so now that I got my incense burner, I wanna use this sometimes for what I wanna, don't wanna do like a full 
smoke cleansing with like the herb bundles, but more so just like lighting this on my altar. Um, and I'm gonna see which ones I like more because I was gonna get like a whole, originally I was gonna do a whole frankincense one. Um, my favorite scent is sandalwood, so I was also tempted to do that, but I was like, let's just see which ones I vibe with more. So we're gonna do that. Then they, like I said, stir up a bunch of oils and things. So like, look at how pretty this is. Um, yeah, they make their own, they make their own shit there. So they have a ton of different oils. So I got a protection oil. I love my protection magic shit. I basically was going there to do a bottle, like get a lot of protection stuff. Cause I just feel like I need to get my shit in order with like this new place. Like I've cleansed it a lot, but like it needs like wards and everything else, which I plan on doing in the next couple of weeks. I already have some, but like I don't have it like everything. So I wanted this to like anoint candles, whatever. Like it says even on here, like anointing oil for candles, charms and talismans. So like I plan on just using that for a lot of different things. They also have a ton of oils for like different gods and goddesses that they like whip up. Um, so I'm always look at the Persephone one like, should I start working with her? I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready for um, deity work. Then all of this is a fuck ton of chime candles. So I, I love candle magic. I'm a bitch that loves candle magic and I've gotten uh, more into it lately. I've done a number of candle spells now and it is my favorite. Um, so far. So I got a bunch of colors. I had at home already, I usually always have white candles and black candles. These are chime candles if you're not familiar. They usually burn in about an hour, maybe less. Um, and they're my favorites just because I don't necessarily, like I haven't gotten to the stage where I have like a seven day candle or like a candle that like I, yeah, I put out or whatever. No, I just, I want to burn this in one sitting. And I know that that's for like usually quicker spells and stuff, but like this has worked for me so far. These also work well as like supplemental candles so you can burn a couple different ones. You can use this to like charge a bigger candle, whatever. So I just basically, let's see, I restocked with more white and more black. White and black candles are like the go-to. Almost everyone that does candle magic uses these at some point. Um, protection, cleansing, like these are the go-tos and white substitutes for like any other color but I want to stock them in my other colors. So I just have them on hand for if I want to do a spell, I have them. Cause now I'm getting more into like spell crafting. I'm finally getting to the point where like I'm doing more consistent spells and not just like passive work. So orange is more for like confidence and things. These all can be for a number of different things, but like my understanding is orange is like kind of for confidence. So is yellow. I already had one yellow at home. Um, green, their greens are bright, which is interesting. Usually they are darker than this. Um, green can be for like prosperity, luck, also healing. Um, red is like passion, um, can be like lust. Um, sometimes romance, um, potentially, is this sometimes breaking and banishing things? I'm not sure. Blue can also be healing. This blue feels more healing to me than green, personally. So blue is more like healing, peace, calm that kind of thing. And then purple can be also like prosperity, think like royalty, things like that, but can also be healing. Um, also like intuition, dream stuff. So, and those can also be used for a number of different things. Those are just the ones that like I had in mind. I now have like my jar full of those to use at any point. And the last thing is I got three books. Um, did I need to get three books? No. Um, do I sometimes just really, I mean, obviously I love books. I'm a book person. Um, I've been very much wanting to just like get back into reading about craft stuff. And I'm at the point where like, I'm kind of intermediate almost. Like I've read a lot of the beginner books and I just want to get stuff that's more, um, deep diving into certain topics. So that's what I got with some of these. These have all been on my wish list for a while. What I do is I add stuff to my Amazon wish list and then I buy them in like witch shops to like support the local business owners. So these are all things I'm very excited about. I also have one other thing that I am getting from Amazon because I ordered it before I went to the store and I didn't think they were gonna have it in stock because it's from like a smaller, like, I think it might be self-published, um, but that's coming as well. I'll talk about that at the end. But I got Plant Witchery by Julie Diaz. Um, this is a guide to over 200 plants. I was gonna get Scott Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs, but I'm just, I know Scott Cunningham is great. People talk about his stuff all the time, however, I just can't with anything super heavily influenced by Wicca and I just have something, I don't know, Scott Cunningham, like I just, some of the men in magic circles, I just, I don't know. So I've heard great things about this. I hear that Juliet Diaz is wonderful um, and this has a ton of herbs and stuff obviously and it has pictures as well and it has 
the different elemental properties, some history of them, medicinal properties, magical properties, and then some sort of like plant wisdom. Um, and then we'll sometimes have like, here's like a spell that she would do sort of to like give some inspiration or for you to do it yourself. So right now I'm very much in the kind of spell crafting. Like I don't, and I've never liked, taking spells directly from someone else or from even like a book or whatever, but more so using that for inspiration. So having this along with, again, sometimes some spells and stuff is sort of what I wanted. And I also um, wanted something like this, like an actual um, guide to herbs specifically, because a lot of the books that I read will have like a small sort of like index of herbs and things, but I wanted something a little bit more comprehensive, which is what this is. Then I got Spellcrafting by Erin Murphy Hiscock. Uh, I have her other book, Green Witchcraft. Um, that she's written a bunch of them. She's pretty popular and she has these very aesthetic and pretty books. Uh, but I went and was looking through a ton of different books on sort of like spellcrafting, ritual, things like that at the shop. And this one kept sticking out to me the most, even though it is so like, it looks more mainstream. Um, but the other ones that I saw, a couple of them were very like Wicca inspired. And I am not Wiccan. I would say I'm more of like a folk, uh, traditional witchcraft person, not a Wiccan. So I didn't really want something that was heavily influenced by like Wiccan traditions and that sort of like ceremonial witchcraft. Um, so I wanted something that's more this. I know that she is, like she has like a, I think she might even be Wiccan or has like history in Wiccan, but like doesn't, like from what I've read of her books, they are a little bit more neutral. Um, so I wanted that a little more. So what I liked about this is it has basics of spell crafting. So like spell casting defined, um, ethics, crafting a spell, and then it has like timing, correspondences, raising energy, methods, troubleshooting, um, the art of magical substitution, and then some spells to inspire, and then beyond spell casting. So I kind of wanted this to go over and just, again, this is a little bit more of like a basic primer, so this was this would lead a little bit more beginner, uh, but I wanted this as like a jumping off point. I like how she writes. Um, yeah, so I wanted to get just like better about crafting my own spells and just being more confident in that, I guess. I'm still at this point where I'm like, I wanna do my own stuff, but like I need inspiration. So yeah, I'm, in, I'm, I'm at this like, half point with that. And the last book that I picked up was Protection and Reversal Magic, A Witch's Defense Manual by Jason Miller. I've been hearing about this basically since I got into witchcraft. Um, and this is just all about protection stuff. Um, and like, again, defense. So it's like, it sets up like spicy wards and things like that, which is really fun. So it has stuff about like daily practices, personal protection, protection for the home, getting rid of like spirits and stuff, spirit guardians and servitors, which is why I wanted to get this book. Um, I'm not getting into that quite yet. I'll talk about that in a second. Reversals and counter magic, and then healing and recovery and things like that. He has um, some inspiration from Hecate as well, um, which I find really interesting, but he has like a very just like blunt way of writing, it seems like. So I wanted this because again, it's a little bit intermediate level. Um, it has like a, everything on the back, like it says, like set up early warning systems, um, perform like banishings, make magical decoys to absorb attacks for you, blah, blah, blah. So I love that. I love a defensive magic system. I think that's so fucking cool. And then shortly after getting into witchcraft, and again, I'm not quite there yet, I heard people talking about servitors, which are essentially home guardians that you can like create. Oh, it's almost like spirit energy. So fucking cool. Um, so I wanna learn more about that. It's more like a chaos magic thing, but I like the spicy wards idea. I like awesome, like reversal magic. Like, yeah, set up protections, but also make shit bounce back. Any negativity needs to bounce back out of here. So I love this. And then the last book that is on its way is another book about protection. And I was gonna get that and read that before the Protection and Reversal Magic book. Still might read it before that one. And that is by Rust of Nail and Prick of Thorn, The Theory and Practice of Effective Home Warding. So that is just on home warding, where this book is protection that's home and personal. The by Rust of Nail book is, again, just home warding. It's only like a hundred something pages. So. I wanna have Fort Knox up in this bitch. I wanna have magical Fort Knox um, and yeah, and then just have it refreshers and stuff. Uh, so yeah, that's that's my plan. Cause sometimes I just feel like energy gets funky and I just want it to be good. Um, I've just also felt like there's been occasional things that have happened the last few months that have been like bad vibes in the house, not like spirit stuff, whatever. I don't, if spirits are in here, I'm not aware of them. Um, they probably are, Chicago's a very haunted city, but like, 
they're not messing with me, I'm fine with them. But just people's bad vibes, I feel like have brushed off on me too much in the last couple of months. So we're getting that shit out of here. So that is what I've gotten in the last handful of months as I've been getting back into my witchy shit. Comment down below, let me know again how your craft is going, what you've picked up lately, if you've read these books, what you've thought of them, things like that. Um, and let me know if there's any other stuff that you wanna see. I've talked before about, I know that like, I don't know enough to be a teacher on here. So I more like share my experiences um, because there's plenty of magical like educators here on YouTube, TikTok podcasts, whatever. Uh, but I'm more so like I'm sharing my journey, which is why it tends to be more like reviews of books that I've read, magical supplies that I've gotten, whatever. I don't ever see myself getting on here and being like, here's a spell because why would you listen to me and there's a ton of other people and I also don't know enough. Um, so yeah, let me know if there's any other things just you want to see, hear me talk about, that kind of thing when it comes to witchy stuff. Thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye.